It's that time of year when everyone starts thinking about one thing. Pumpkin? No, spaghetti squash. Oh. Welcome to Crocs in the Kitchen. I'm Jessica. And I am Brian. We are back to cooking today. Yay. We have brought you a lovely recipe, not using pumpkin, but using spaghetti squash because Jessica brought home a spaghetti squash last week and was like, hey, Brian, make something with yeah, this. Yeah, it was on sale at one of our local grocery stores. And I was like, you know what? We haven't had spaghetti squash in a long time. And it's nice because you can always have like a giant bulk of it and not worry really because there's like barely any calories in it. And I was just thinking Brian could come up with a sauce. So I basically gave him, here's the spaghetti squash. We always cook it the same way. Um, and so we'll show you how we do that. But I was basically like, here's a can of diced tomatoes. And then he just did his thing. Yeah. <laughs> basically, I threw together a recipe. I wrote it all down as I went along. Yes. And uh, then we cooked everything together and we made a nice delicious meal that we will now show you how to cook. First, preheat your oven to 400 degrees. Once that is going, we can get everything else together, which includes one large spaghetti squash. Ours was approximately three pounds. Plus one can of fire roasted diced tomatoes, a can of garbanzo beans, some tomato paste, minced garlic, some chopped red onion, balsamic vinegar, some liquid aminos. The large bottle is optional. Some coconut aminos. And for the seasoning, you will need Italian seasoning, basil leaves, oregano leaves, smoked paprika, and some cayenne pepper. First thing you do is put your spaghetti squash into the microwave and microwave it for five minutes or until it is slightly softened. Carefully remove it and let it cool for a bit before you finally decide to cut it in half. After that, it's just as simple as scooping out all of the insides, including all of those seeds. You can actually save all of those seeds and separate them, and then uh, you can bake them in an oven for a nice crunchy snack. I'm still experimenting with this one though, so uh, bear with me on a recipe. After that, we are going to fit the spaghetti squash into this baking dish. Uh, you can use pretty much anything you want, just so long as it has uh, fairly deep sides and then pour in about a half inch of water into the pan just so you can cover up the bottom of the spaghetti squash. After that, place into the center of your preheated oven and set the timer for 40 minutes. With that baking in the oven, we will get started with our sauce by water sauteing a quarter cup of onion in a medium high pan along with a tablespoon of garlic. Just keep it stirring, add in water if it starts to stick, and cook this for about a minute. Once that raw edge has been cooked off a bit, we are going to add in our balsamic vinegar. And that is about two tablespoons of balsamic vinegar. Just keep cooking and stirring this until it starts to thicken up and uh, gets reduced a bit you're looking to actually see the bottom of the pan whenever you scrape a spatula across the bottom. Once that is reduced enough, we can add in all the rest of the ingredients, including the diced tomatoes, and then add in your tomato paste. We like to use this too because we're only using about a tablespoon and uh, this just makes it really convenient so we don't have to open up an entire can. Once the tomato paste is combined in with everything else, we can add in our liquid aminos and our coconut aminos. You can swap out the liquid aminos for low sodium soy sauce if you want to, but I would suggest sticking with the coconut aminos because it adds a bit of sweetness. And we can add in all of our dry ingredients. You can find the link in the description below for all of the ingredient amounts, and you can also just check out the blog post that Jessica makes, which is awesome. Once that is all combined, bring it up to a simmer and reduce the heat 
and cover and simmer for 10 to 15 minutes. Now you may be asking yourself, Brian, isn't the title of this a chickpea and tomato sauce? And you would be correct. I completely forgot to add them in in the first bit. So just go ahead and add those in. Those are drained and rinsed from one whole can of garbanzo beans and uh, just stir them in and allow them to cook through and absorb some of those flavors. Once again, this is covered for 10 to 15 minutes, stirring occasionally. If the sauce is simmered for 10 to 15 minutes, you can actually just reduce it to low if your spaghetti squash is not done cooking and you can just let it sit there. Trust me, it will gain even more flavor the longer that this sits. Once the spaghetti squash is done cooking in the oven, very, very carefully remove it and uh, set it somewhere where it can cool. But seriously, be careful. That is extremely hot water and it is heavy. A trick that we've learned that allows this to cool faster is to actually flip the spaghetti squash over. We just like to use a fork and stab it through the side. But once again, be very, very careful while doing this. Once they've cooled to the point where you can handle them between five and 10 minutes, just take a fork and scrape out all of the inside of the spaghetti squash. This part's actually a lot of fun. I don't know why, but it is. I just like scraping out all the stuff. Once you've got both halves scraped out, just go ahead and add the sauce right on top. You just divvy up what you got in the pan and bing, bang, boom, you've got spaghetti squash with chickpea and tomato sauce. So there you have it. As you can see, that was not difficult to do at all. And uh, I think that this came out just splendidly. Yes, it looks very pretty. I know, right? I'm pretty and it's excited And it's like a, a large meal too. Yeah. And you know, since spaghetti squash aren't that expensive, like even in, in like an off season, you can still find them and stuff. They're still they not- They can get a little bit They can get a bit pricey, pricey but they're not uh -huh. like stupid expensive. Yeah. Uh, but really, really easy to make something, especially for us, because we just split the one squash, bang, bang. Yeah. All good. Yeah, we haven't really done any like batch cook testing for this one. I know you guys are used to our recipes making like a massive quantity. Um, this was just a one-off. Sometimes on the weekends, we just like to have a nice meal that's just a one-off meal. But I actually think in the future, we'll definitely try batch cooking this one. Just make up a bunch of spaghetti squash, put it in some containers, put a few scoops of the sauce in there, mm -hmm. and there's lunch for the week. Like, yeah. super easy. Absolutely. Also, spaghetti squash is very versatile to cook with. We have actually used this in a casserole before we switched to our whole food plant-based diet. And uh, that was super tasty. Yeah. And I think we could probably come up with a whole food plant-based version oh, yeah. of that dish. Easily. Uh, so look out for that one in the future. Yeah. But I love this. I think it's great. But go, let's go ahead and try it out for these fine folks. Yes. <laughs> oh, one thing I really like about this actually though, is the fact that the, the chickpeas stay together. You know, they don't get super mushy, like they've still got some texture to them, yeah. almost like they are meat. And that's kind of like what makes this just a little bit better in my opinion. It was smelling so good in here when he was cooking up that sauce. It was ridiculous. It yeah. was like, oh my gosh. Yeah, I really like the chickpeas. They have like kind of a nice burst of flavor. And even the spaghetti squash itself, I had a little bit of bite, you know, from some of the remnants in the thing. Even this just by itself was amazing because it's, you know, a little bit sweet. It's got the texture to it. You know, if you're going for a little bit more savory, obviously you could add something that is savory on top, hence like this sauce, but it didn't need anything. I could have seriously eaten half of this just by itself, but with the sauce on top makes it way better. It's actually really good. Mm -hmm. And full disclosure, sometimes by the time we eat, the stuff is not hot anymore. <laughs> That's true. I did a full on photo shoot. I actually took it outside, <laughs> took some photos, came back inside. Then we, you know, film other stuff, whatever. And honestly, this tastes it's still good. really good. Like still it's, super it's, good. it's at like room temperature now and it tastes really good. Like I'm actually, I actually really like it at room temperature. I know. All in all, 
I think it's great. Uh, so I really hope you guys happen to try this one out uh, just because, I don't know, Italian food is, is one of the best things on earth as far as I am concerned. And so to have it with all these really nice uh, vegetables and the, you know, the chickpeas there, it is superb. I have to say, this is probably one of my favorite things that you've made, like... I know. Since we switched. <laughs> Knocked it out of the park on the first try. What can I say? Good job, Brian. Yay! Yay. <laughs> but, uh, Jessica. Yes? Where can these folks find us if they so choose oh, to? Well, if they would like, they can visit us on our Instagram page where we post updates and all that kind of stuff. And they can also find us on Facebook and Pinterest and Twitter and all that. If you click the link in the description below as well, you can go to our website. There is a post with every single um, video that we do, whether it be a recipe or not, there is always a blog post. And so if you click on the link to the blog post for this particular one, you'll find not only the recipe, which you can print out, mm -hmm. you can also find links to products that we used in the video in case you're wondering like, where'd they get those fire roasted tomatoes with no salt added or- Where'd, where'd they get that spatula? Where'd they get that spatula? Uh, sometimes, yes. Just depends. If there's anything weird or unusual that we use, we try to include links just so you guys can find information about it. But if you click the link, like I said, in the description of the video below, then you'll be able to find all that stuff. Yeah. That was a good outro. Thanks. Well, I think that's all I got. <laughs> She's done for sure. We will see you next time on Crocs in the Kitchen. Bye. Bye. You didn't tell them to subscribe or like the video or anything like that. Bye.